And welcome to worship this first Sunday in Advent. A uh, couple of announcements. Uh, start with the easy ones. Uh, the 6th to 7th annual bazaar will be this coming Saturday, December 4th, from 11 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. at the First Congregational United Church of Christ. Um, they were very gracious to us and still are. And so if you're able to plan and stop in and support their bazaar, uh, they're going to have a cookie bar, pie shop, candy shop, and a country store. I don't, I've never been to one, but I'm, I know I'm a cookie and pie person, so <clears throat> I will be stopping by, but support uh, the UCC church. The next one is the Empty Stocking Fundraising Talent Program, which is Wednesday, December 8th. We do have a tote outside if anyone wants to donate anything for this. This is 95 years. The Empty Stocking Fund has um, helped families provide for better Christmas for their children, a Christmas meal, warm clothing, toys, etc. So if you have any clothing, hats, jackets, whatever you want to. You could drop it here at the church and then we will take this to. Um, I was reminded this Wednesday, is it 6 o'clock, Richard? 6 o'clock, Wednesday, our building committee will be meeting. I have a sign up. It's Advent. And we need uh, people who will do the call to worship and read the psalm and also to light the candle. Um, I would prefer it be one family or group that does the entire thing. But if you want to split it up and only light the candle, you can, and if you, or if you just want to read. So this will be floating around and in the back. Uh, please sign up, otherwise I will be calling some people. And, and uh, we gracious, last week, uh, Wendy spoke up and said she would do this week. So, last but not least, uh, when I was gone, I made this mistake, and I made it again. Uh, and I'm afraid Kathy is going to see what I mean. Your bulletin is not in order. Uh, page one is page one, and page six is page six, and from there it goes crazy. So let me tell you what happened. Page one, page two is when you open it, it's this, where it starts with thank you. Page three is where page two is. Page four is on the back here, and then five is on the insert, and six is in the... So if you don't move the uh, page to the right order when you send it to print, that's what happened. And I forgot to move <clears throat> page two where it sh should have been, which would be... Anyway, long story short, that's my error, and I didn't catch it till after print, and I'm going, ah, do I want to waste the paper and the print? And I said no. So just flip around. <laughs> One, three, two, five, four, <laughs> six. <laughs> I wrote it on mine so I could keep track. Uh, with that said, please stand as you are able and join in giving thanks to God for our blessing, uh, singing, Come All Ye Faithful, or Come All Ye Thankful People Come, hymn number 694.
remain standing and join in the responsive prayers thanksgiving, of thanksgiving as printed in your bulletin. Thank you, creator of the universe, for the people gathered around us today. We give thanks for the things of the earth that give us the means of life. Thank, Thank you, you for, for the plants, plants animals, animals, and birds that, that we, we use as food and medicine. Thank you for the natural world in which we find the means to be clothed and housed. Thank you, Lord, for the ability to use these gifts of the natural world. Help us to see our place among these gifts, not to squander them or think of them as, self, as means for selfish fame. May, May we respect the life of all you have made. May our spirits be strengthened by using only what we need. And may we use our strength to help those who need us. Amen. You may be seated. As we bless the Advent wreath, Christ came to bring us salvation and has promised to come again. Let us pray that we may always be ready to welcome him. Come, come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. That the keeping of Advent may open our hearts to God's love. Come, come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. That the light of Christ may penetrate the darkness of sin. Come, come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. That this read may constantly remind us to prepare for the coming of Christ. Come, come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. That the Christmas season may fill us with peace and joy as we strive to follow the example of Christ. Come, Lord Jesus. Loving God, your church joyfully awaits the coming of its Savior, who enlightens our hearts and dispels the darkness of ignorance and sin. Pour forth your blessings upon us as we light the candles of this wreath. May their light reflect the splendor of Christ, who is Lord, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Oh, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's
first reading this morning is taken from Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 14 through 16 the days are coming declared the Lord when I will fulfill the good promise I made to the people of Israel and Judah in those days and at that time I will make a righteous branch sprout from David's line he will do what is just and right in the land in those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety. This is the name by which it will be called, the Lord, our righteous Savior. Let us read responsively Psalm 25, verses 1 through 10. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O oh my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exalt over me. Let none that wait for you be put to shame. Let them be ashamed to our the treachery. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore the Lord instructs sinners in the way and leads the humble in what is right and teach them their way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep the Lord's covenant and testimonies. Our second reading this morning is taken from 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 9 through 13. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy we have in the presence of our God because of you night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you again and supply what is lacking in your faith now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus clear the way for us to come to you may the Lord make your love increase an overflow for each other and for everyone else, just as ours does for you. May he strengthen your heart so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father when our Lord Jesus comes with all his holy ones. Hymn number 196.
Our gospel reading this morning is taken from Luke chapter 21, verse 25 through 36. There will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexed at the roaring and tossing of the sea. People will faint from terror apprehension of what is coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud of power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. He told them this parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. Be careful, or your hearts will be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and the anxieties of life. And that day will come on you suddenly like a trap. For it will come on all those who live on the face of the whole earth. Be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen, and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. The Word of the Lord. Last week, we had Christ the King Sunday. And I mentioned it's the last Sunday on the church calendar. This Sunday, we have the first Sunday of Advent, and we lit the first Advent candle. And it reminds us, as we celebrate Advent, of the first coming of Christ. But Advent has more to do also with the second coming of Christ. So we look back at the first coming, and we look forward to his second coming. And that's what Advent reminds us as we begin anew. Looking forward for the King to return. In our first reading this morning in Jeremiah, we see God made this promise. And in Jeremiah's day, as things were really bad for Judah, he said, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the good promise I made. God made a promise, and it is a what kind of promise? A good promise. And the promise is that in those days and at that time, I will make a righteous branch sprout from David's line. We as Christians believe that that righteous branch that sprouted from David's line is who? Jesus. About a month ago, we preached about Bartimaeus, the blind man sitting on the road by Jericho. And do you remember the words that Bartimaeus cried out and people were telling him, be quiet, shut up, you know. He shouted, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. We're reminded that Jesus is indeed of the line and lineage of David. And that he is the one who fulfilled the promise that in those days. So that is what we're looking back at, the first coming of Christ. Jesus, the sprout, the branch that sprouted from the line of David. And the scripture said he will do what is just and right. That's compared to us. In the psalm today we read, David writing, let me not be put to what? 
shame. And he goes on and says, teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. Many of us realize that what David writes is that we do indeed need a Savior. I read the verse where we, and we just read it a few moments ago. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me. For the sake of your goodness, O God. I don't know how many of you think of God as a God of wrath in the Old Testament and a God of love in the New Testament. At least that's what most people that I talk to. God of the Old Testament is a God of what? Wrath, you know, wars. And, but the God of the New Testament is a God of what? Love and grace and forgiveness. But here we see, David makes it quite clear that God has always been a God of what? Love. We read, for you are the God of my salvation, for you await all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O God, of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. What David is saying is, God's steadfast love has been from when? Of old. It's from the beginning. God has been a God of love. The problem is, we don't understand the word love sometimes. Two people can say to somebody, I love you, and because I love you, I'll give you everything. And another person can say, because I love you, I will withhold certain things from you so you can learn of your own. I've seen it where people, because of love, they really become enablers and give too much to their kids. And some other, because of love, they withhold certain things and teach their kids certain things. Some people call it tough love. But we see God has always been a God of what? Love. Even from the beginning. Even when, let's be realistic, Adam and Eve sinned. Because God loved them, He provided for them. He still had to, what, kick them out the garden. Because he loved them, as a matter of fact, it's because God loves us, he kicked us out the garden. Not because he hates us. And so David writes, be mindful of your mercy, your love, your steadfast love. The problem is with us when it comes to love, all love kind of wavers, kind of like a teenager. You know, love, hate. But God's love is what? Steadfast. It's from all. And that's why David said, remember not the sins of my youth, my transgressions. The problem with me is I, I might have grown past teenage years like so many of you, but I'm still sinning. And so we have to go to God and say, remember not those sins, you know. Don't put me to shame for your goodness sake. Because here's what the scripture teaches us about God. Good and upright is the Lord. And because the Lord is good and upright, David asked this question, teach me your path. Therefore, the Lord instructs sinners in the ways and lead the humble in what is right. I don't know about you, but... Whenever we face any kind of circumstance, do we always respond with doing the right thing, the good thing, the responsible thing? Are we like kids and have to go to God and say, God, I messed up, remember not the sins of my... The good news for us is, therefore the Lord instructs us, helps us. Because the truth is, all the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep the Lord's covenants and testimony. God loves us. Even from before Christ, 
So the Bible is the story of love. Because God loved Adam and Eve, he had to punish them. Sometimes it's tough love. But that love have never wavered. And that's why he sent his son. And we as Christians believe that Jesus is that sprout of David. The line and lineage. That he is the Christ, the Messiah. And so we pick up in 1 Thessalonians. Where Paul said, how can we thank God enough for you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you again. So this, this is a prayer. And so Paul writing to the Thessalonians remind them of a couple things. And he, he does this in verse 11. It says, Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus Christ clear the way for us to come to you. May the Lord make your love increase. As a people of love, we truly need to learn how to love. And may God not only teach us how to love, but may we increase in love. As a matter of fact, not only increase, but increase and overflow for each other. I don't know about you, but I grew up in a large family. And I can tell you there were times that it wasn't love, it was what? I have five brothers. Got in fights. You know, it's part of being a family. But the point is, Paul is praying for the Thessalonian church and in a sense for us. That our love may what? Increase and overflow for each other. There are difficult days, difficult times. As a church, I mean, we look around and we're not there yet. You know, every week we see more and more things. Some of us want it to be done yesterday. I mean, but as we take our time, but it's not just the problems that we are facing here. The Bible makes it quite clear that Christ will come again. And here are some of the things that Jesus said, you know, that we should expect before he comes. He said there will be signs, the sun, the moon, the stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexed at the roaring and tossing of the sea. And do we have nations today that are perplexed? anguish. I don't know about you, but I, I have gotten to the point where I turn off the news. And it doesn't matter from which side you get it from. There, there's a lot of anguish. A lot of, I mean, I don't know about you, but hearing about the new Omicron variant, you know, we had the Delta and they, now we have Omicron and, and it looked like, how many of us are tired? anguish. As a matter of fact, he said, people will faint from terror, apprehension, apprehensive of what is coming on the world. I don't know how many of you are, are living during these times. Aren't those some of the things we are? We are, are apprehensive, we're anxious, we're worried, concerned. I was looking up the stats Wadena County is the highest in the what? The highest, statistically. But here's the good news. We are a people of love and we need to have that your love increase for one another and that it overflows but as a people of love, it doesn't just stop between us. Paul goes on, and for everyone else. I think Jesus put it quite clearly. Not only are we to 
be like everybody else and love those who are lovely and those who do good to us. But Jesus said what? Love your enemy. Pray for. We are a people of love. As the world is in anxiety and anxious and worried and perplexed, and we are supposed to be the people of God who love. And that's what Advent reminds us is Christ came. But more importantly, Christ will what? Come again. Listen to the way that Paul ends that. Verse 13 in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. It says, May he strengthen your hearts so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father when our Lord Jesus comes with all his holy ones. Christ will come again with all his holy ones. And that's what the gospel is talking about, that he will come again. At that time, they will see the Son of Man coming in a, in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things happen, begin to take place. Stand up and lift up your head. Because your redemption is drawing near. People, with all these problems, you know, I, I, I like the Bible. And the part, you know, I, I like the part where it says, you know, there'll be rumors and there'll be earthquakes and there'll be famine and there'll be pestilence. I don't know what you want to call this Omicron variant. You know, it's been two plus years now. People are anxious and worried. But... The good news for us is we have hope and faith and love that Christ is coming again. And he said, lift up your heads because your redemption is what? Near. He didn't explain in this parable that, you know, about the fig tree. You know that summer is coming because just as we see all these signs, we know that Christ is what? Coming again. The warning to us in verse 34 said, Be careful, or your hearts will be weighed down. Weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and the anxieties of life. Well, I don't drink and carouse, but sometimes I, I get a little anxious. I don't know about you, but here's the thing. The Bible is saying, we don't have to to worry and be anxious and worry about the anxiety of life because on that day, which will come suddenly, the whole earth, the whole world will see it. But we will be able to take our stand before the Son of Man. Advent reminds us Christ came. Christ will come again. God loved us in the past, He loves us now, and He will love us in the future. We will be able to take our stand before the Son of Man as we celebrate Advent, remembering His first coming and looking forward to His second coming. We know the God of love is here to teach us His path, His way. So that we, the people of love, can love each other and love others. The word of the Lord. Let us boldly affirm our fate. There is one God and Father, and there is one Lord, Jesus Christ. All things exist through Him, and we live through Him. Amen. Let us sing the refrain of O come, let us adore him.
This week, the church prays for the church in Burundi, Malaysia, and Singapore. Are there any prayer requests or praise? Anyone else? Let us go to the Lord in prayer, followed by a moment of silent prayer and confession, followed by the Lord's prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you so much for you loving us. From the very beginning, you have loved us. Remember not the, the sins of our youth. Let us not be put to shame. Forgive us, Father, when our love wanes, when we don't do the good and right and just thing. Teach us, O oh Lord, your way, your path. Increase your love in us for one another and for all people. May we be known as a people of love who care for all. Father, we pray that you be with us as a church. As we continue to make progress each and every day and each and every week on the progress to build this building. Allow us to not just build a building, but to build your church here at this place at this time. We pray that you bless the workers who are working and those who are giving. For we are all part of the body of Christ, working together to further your kingdom here in this place. Father, we thank you for the progress and we thank you for the blessings. But we, the church, are made of people. And we pray, O oh Father, for those who are not here today. Bless them. Open your hearts to your love and care and be with them this day. And Father, bless each and every one of us today as we remember the first coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and as we look forward to his second coming. May we not be like the world, anxious and worried and perplexed. We know all these things must happen. May we place our faith in you and may we follow you father we pray also for the church in Burundi, malaysia and singapore be with them as they reach out to millions of people many who do not know your word or your way father we pray for Tony as he recovers with his back. We pray for Tom and his COVID. We pray for others who are sick. We especially pray for our county, Wadena, as it is one of the highest with this COVID. Be with them. Bring about your healing. Be with the doctors, the nurses, the hospitals, and others. Father, we place our trust in you, and we know, we know we need not be ashamed. Father, we now pause for a moment of silent, personal prayer and confession. And now as children of God, we repeat the words our Lord taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Those who keep God's covenant and decrees walk in the path of steadfast love and faithfulness. It is right to share our blessings to the world. 
With thankful hearts, let us joyfully share our gifts in gratitude to our God. The morning offering will now be received. Shepherds, 236. Please stand. Turn up the nose. join me in the offertory prayer. Send these gifts forth into your world, a sign of the bounty of Christ coming into the world. Amen. Please be seated. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 2 and 3 reads, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness cover the people. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Please join me as we sing hymn number 206, I Want to Walk as a Child of Light.
Blessing followed by our hymn of dismissal, which will be 248. We'll sing the fourth stanza. He rules the world with truth and grace. Joy to the world. Prepare our hearts, for God is near. Go with joy and remain aware and awake. Grace and peace to you from God the Creator and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh. 